I'm going for my largest 3D printed project so far with a pretty complex yet satisfying design. The Magnificent Marble Machine. This is the largest print and some of the largest parts are printed so far and of course we need to start with the base which comes in four parts. Using Prusament for all my filament here, I decided to go with Marble Grey for the base which prints relatively nice and actually provides a really nice finish on its flat surfaces too. I did find the corners would lift up while printing, just a minute touch and although the part has a large surface area and wouldn't come loose, it did annoy me so Ebrim quickly sorted that issue regardless. There are four corners to print here and with all four parts ready, these line up nicely and lock together by lining up the threads and securing with some threaded caps. Again I stuck with the same colour here so they blend in with the base somewhat and once done these can be used to screw onto the lined up threads and lock the four parts together. This is a concept that will be used throughout the build, meaning no glue or other parts needed and it works really well, a pretty ingenious design. Anyways with the base complete I switched to vanilla white for printing supports. There are a lot of supports to get through and it's a time consuming process taking me several days to get through all support sections. I like to use a wide brim for the taller parts that branch out as they grow just in case the part comes loose later in the build, although I did take the chance to use the lightning infill at 20% for the first time in these since they do not need to be very strong, just enough to hold the tracks really, but it seemed to work really well and the models came out great while saving a fair bit of filament in the process. Again these all lock down into place using more threaded caps and they stay in place quite firm, although easy enough to remove should the need arise when installing other parts later. It's kinda like a big 3D puzzle at this point, printing and installing different sections of the model a little at a time, adding parts and constructing the framework ready for the next level. These are the largest parts in the build so do take some time to get through, all securing into the base with threaded caps. With supports complete, it's time to move on to another large yet important section, the stair lift. Again I'll switch back to marble grey for this, consisting of the main outer shell, which once complete came out really nice. I really do like this marble grey, probably my new favourite to be fair, but even so this goes onto the left side of the structure, held in place with more threaded caps. Of course that's not the end of the stair lift, we'll continue with getting it working by printing the only part that needs a fair bit of support material, the camshaft. Also switch to some slightly heavier infill here to make it stronger and once done the organic support material comes off with ease. After which the camshaft slides into place inside the stair lift, held with an end cap and a single gear before locking with a clip. All that's left is to print and drop in all the steps, which as you can see I decided to print in two colours. A quick test by hand and this section is complete and working nicely. With that done we can move on to the main gears and marble tracks, some of the gears rather large considering they carry the bearings up levels and will need a little construction, adding the internal planetary gears to build up the support structure as shown here, yet another ingenious design. We need to get this mounted next and I found mounting the lower gear easier by removing the large neighbouring support structure, which is easy thanks to those threaded caps. Now providing ample space to slide the gear assembly into place and with a little fiddling getting all gears loaded into position. And finally lock from behind with a single clip before inserting the bearing support arm, after which we're ready to reinstall the neighbouring support structure we've just removed. There's another of these to construct and install, attaching directly next to the first in the same fashion, after which we can test to ensure these sections work as expected. The remaining gears are smaller in comparison and there are quite a few to get through. I went with Galaxy Black for the majority of the gears, with any that lift or handle the marbles in orange. So first gear through an axle and into place, before we continue to work on the rear corner of the construction, adding another few gears and clips to keep them in position. After which our stair lift is now attached and synchronised with the two larger gear lifts previously installed. 
Next, we'll move on to the smaller lifting gear. Just as before, you'll find it easier to quickly remove sections to create more space as and when needed, so that the gear can be lowered down into place and held by inserting a pin through the middle and finish off with a clip before reinstalling the support we just removed. Again, that thumb screw design really makes this super easy. Time for our second axle now, feed through a chain gear designed to rotate with the use of a chain which we'll come to shortly, and feed the axle through the supports, and into a wide gear at the rear, which also meshes with the small lifting gear we just installed. And with that, the left side of the entire gear structure is complete. Turning the chain gear at the front results in the small lifting gear, the stair lift, and the two larger lifting gears all working nicely. While this is a construction that can be hand driven, we'll be motorizing this unit, a relatively simple task using a motor and power adapter with a variable speed switch thrown in between. Connecting these together is relatively straightforward, followed by a quick test to ensure everything works okay before removing the top half of the motor mount, as well as the mount just in front to give us some extra space to work, before seating the motor into position, followed by dropping on the motor gear, and another quick test with the motor now housed in place. Ok, so now we can attach the motor to our existing gear set by using a single chain link. This prints in place, so you'll need a pretty well tuned printer to produce this section, consisting of three parts that snap together. Once in place, rotate the motor to take up that slack, and before reinstalling the top motor mount section, you may wish to add some glue or a rubber band as in my example here, just to keep the motor snug and stop it from slipping and rotating itself while encapsulated within the plastic housing. With that done, we can reinstall the top half of the mount with its single threaded cap, before running a quick test to ensure everything works as expected. Perfect. So now we can go ahead and build up the gear reduction mechanism using axles and gears in the correct orientation before feeding through the support mount and securing with clips on the opposite side. It's important to get the gears in the correct orientation and position here. Notice how I removed the rear corner support to provide more space so that can now go back into position. Finally, all that's left is a single small gear that links the motor to the gear reduction mechanism we just installed. We removed this support earlier, so we can now get the gear installed and clipped into place before reinstalling the support. And with that, our gears are now all in place and complete. Again, test by powering the motor, and it does get a little noisy, but everything seems to be turning nice and free. All that's left at this point are the actual bearing tracks. I wanted these to stand out, so chose a brighter orange colour for the majority of these sections. All pretty straightforward prints and held in place with various threaded caps directly onto the support structures. As with the rest of the build, while we could add some glue to all these pieces, I did find it wasn't necessary since the threaded caps really do a good job in securing parts together. Lots of tracks to add here though, so taking it a step at a time, they all attach with relative ease. And we're done, project finally complete. With the motor powered, everything continues to rotate and move nicely. So time to add some bearings to ensure they run all the way around the circuit. And I think we can call this project a success. A really nice, satisfying build that came together wonderfully well.